Hey y'all, welcome to sixth grade, chapter seven, lesson six. We're gonna go ahead and get started, but before we do, I want you guys to pause, do whatever you need to do, write this down, memorize it, take a picture, add on there just to make sure that you've got whatever it is that you need to remember, okay? So the sum means adding, the difference means subtracting, product of means multiplying, and quotient means dividing, and don't forget your pen off, okay? All right, so now, this is giving you um, one story for two problems, okay? So you might miss this story if you're not looking for it, so just pay attention, okay? So Jeff sold pumpkins he grew for $7 each at the farmer's market, okay? They did the first one for you, okay? Number two says if Jeff sold 30 pumpkins, how much money did he make? We need to take that 30 pumpkins and multiply it by $7, and you're going to get $210, Seven times zero is zero. Seven times three is 21, $210, okay? All right. An architect is designing a building and each floor will be 12 feet tall, okay? So the formula that's gonna go with that, okay, would be either H over 12, which means H divided by 12, or you could put H divided by 12, whatever that is, okay? Then that means that H is whatever the height of the building is. Okay, so over here it says that the their building that they're designing is 132 feet tall. How many floors can be built? Well, 132 divided by 12 is 11. Okay, it's 11 floors because it's asking how many floors. Okay, all right. So now we're going to go ahead and do. I'm going to cross those out so we're not confusing them, okay? It says to write an algebraic expression for each word expression. Then evaluate the expression for the values in these, okay? So we're going to have three different math problems that we're doing for each one of these, okay? Because wherever it has the variable, in this case that's B, we're going to put in 1, 6, and 13.5, okay? So let's start. So the quotient of the quotient of 100 and the sum of B and 24. Okay, well, quotient of 100, okay, quotient 100 of B and 24, okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill in. I have one, I have six, and I have 13.5 that I need to fill in wherever B is, okay? So first, I have 100 divided by 1 plus 24, okay? Well, 1 plus 24 is 25, so then I have 100 divided by 25, and I know that that is 4, okay? So 4 is my first one, okay? Next, I need to fill in 6, okay? So 100 divided by B plus 24. Now I'm going to fill in 6, okay? So now I have 100 divided by 6 plus 24. Well, 6 plus 24 is 30, so then I have 100 divided by 30, okay? Okay. So now I need to come over on the side. And I need to do 100 divided by 30. Okay, well, 30 is not going to go into 1. It's not going to go into 10. It'll go into 100 three times. Okay, 3 times 30 is 90. When I subtract, I get 10. Okay, we will put a decimal and a 0 and bring down our 0. So 3 is going to go in to 100 again three times. You know what? Let's do it this way. Instead of adding a decimal and a zero, okay, let's put our numerator, which is our remainder, over our denominator, okay? And 10 over 30 is equal to the same as one-third. So now our answer is going to be 3 and one-third, okay? That's your second answer, okay? All right. Our third one, okay, we have 100 divided by B plus 24, okay? 
And our third one is going to be 13.5. So 100 divided by 13.5 plus 24. Okay. So 13.5 plus 24 is 37.5. Okay, so now I'm going to go down right underneath this and I'm going to put 100 inside the box. And you'll see out here, I'm going to put 375 because I cannot put a decimal outside the box. Okay, that means that I need to move this decimal one time. So I did. That also means that if I had a decimal right here, I would have to move it one time. I need to add a zero. Okay. So over here on the side, I'm going to write down my multiples of 375 because I don't happen to know those off the top of my head. Okay, so I'm going to have 375, then I'm going to have 750, then I'm going to have 1,125, and 1,500, and I'm going to do one more. 1875. Okay, I like to try and do five if I can, just so I've got it. Um, if I need that, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so 375 is not going to go into 10, it's not going to go into 100. So into a thousand, it looks like the closest I'm going to get is 750. That's two times. Okay, so two times 375 was 750. I'm going to subtract. Okay, and I'm going to get 250 when I do. Okay, I would. If you need to know how I did that, there's that. Okay, so now I can put 250 over 375 and I can reduce that. Or I can put a decimal out of zero, bring it down. Make sure if you put a decimal, you bring it up, okay? Doesn't matter if you put a decimal, if you want to do a fraction, doesn't matter, it doesn't change the answers, okay? Put them in a different form, but it doesn't change the answers, okay? So now it looks like I might actually have to add one more set of 375, and then I'll get 2,250 if I do six of them, okay? And seven is going to be two six. Two, five, which is going to be too much. Okay. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six, which is going to be two, two, five, zero, subtract. Okay. Zero. And make that a four, five. Okay. So now I'm going to be at 2,500 again, which means, again, I'm going to have six. So I'm just going to put 2.6 on my line, okay? So 2.6. So you have four, three and one third, and 2.6, okay? There's your work. You're going to have to write it down, guys. Sorry, you don't have to write down your multiples. You don't have to write that down, but you do need to show the rest of your work, okay? All right. I'm going to go ahead and get Started on the next one on a new piece of paper that you can't see through. Okay. And it says 13 more than the product of M and 5. Well, that one's pretty easy. So it's 13 more. That's the sum. Okay. Then the product of M and 5. Okay. So again, we're going to fill in 1, 6, and 13.5. Okay, so now we're going to have 13 plus 1 times 5. Okay, well, 1 times 5 is 5, so 13 plus 5 equals 18. That's your first one. Okay. Okay. All right, we're still going to have the same formula, but I'm going to fill in six this time for M. So now I'm going to have 
13 plus 6 times 5. Boom. Okay. Well, 6 times 5 is 30. So now I have 13 plus 30, which is 43. Okay. Your next one, 43. Okay. And the last one, just because it wants to be fun, we're going to fill in 13.5. Okay. So I have 13 plus 13.5 times 5. Now, I don't happen to know that off the top of my head, so I'm going to go ahead over to the side and write it out. Five times five is 25, carry your two. Five times three is 15, plus two is 17, carry your one. Five times one is five, plus one is six. Then I went in one time there, go in one time there, 67.5. So then we're gonna have 13 plus 67.5, okay? And I'm gonna go 67.5 plus 13, and I'm going to put a point zero just so that I have something there. Okay. Drop your decimal first thing. Five plus zero is going to be five. Seven plus three is ten. Carrier one. One plus six is seven. Plus one more is eight. Eighty point five is your last one. Okay. All right, guys. Doing okay. All right. Okay, we're going to go down. We're going to do number seven. Okay, in the town of Pleasant Hill, there's an average of 16 sunny days each month. Write an expression to represent the approximate number of sunny days for any number of months. Tell what the variable represents. Well, 16 days per month, right? And M. So where M equals month. Boom, done. Okay, all right. How many sunny days can a resident of Pleasant Hill expect to have in nine months? Well, then we're just gonna do 16 and we're gonna multiply that by nine. Okay, nine times six is 54, carry our five. Nine times one is nine plus five is 14, 144 sunny days. Okay, all right, you guys are gonna go over to the back to do the lesson check on your own because you're brilliant and you can. And we're gonna go ahead and do the spiral review. So it says sterling silver consists of 92.5% silver and 7.5% copper. What decimal represents the portion of silver in sterling silver? Okay, so just this. It's giving us this information, but we don't need it, okay? So we have 92.5% and we all know that when we are doing, going from a percent to just a decimal, we just move the decimal place two times. So 0.925 and it doesn't give us a gram or anything like that. So it's just 0.925. You can put a zero in front of it if you want. It doesn't change it. Okay. How many pints are equivalent to three gallons? Well, gosh, I love these because I get to use my robot, which you guys are just going to love. Get you one of these if you don't have one. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and we are going to start with three gallons. And in one gallon, I need to know first when I'm going from gallon to pint. Okay, you will notice that in between a gallon and any pint is a quart. So I have to make a pit stop at quart before I can go straight to pint. Okay, which means I need another one of those. Okay, so in one gallon, there's one, two, three, four quarts touching that gallon. Four quarts. Now in one quart, so in one quart, 
there's one, two pints touching it. Okay. So all I did was I started with what I know. I want to cross cancel the labels, just the labels. Okay. So that I know I'm ending up in what I want and I need to end up in pints. Okay. So now when I multiply straight across the top, three times four is 12 times two is 24. And when I multiply the bottom, it's just one, which means 24 pints. Done. Yes, you need to write down your work, show your work, it's important. And freeze, take a picture, draw a picture, whatever you gotta do to keep this in mind, okay? It's important. Okay. What operation should be done first to evaluate 10 plus parentheses, 66 minus six squared and parentheses? Okay, so we're doing PEMDAS, right? Okay, so in order to know which one's gonna come first, well, we have to do the parentheses first, but within the parentheses, there's an exponent. I can't do 66 minus six squared. I have to know what six squared is. So the operation I need to do first is going to be six squared. Okay, that's the exponent inside of the parentheses, okay? Okay. Evaluate the algebraic expression for h onto m plus n divided by 2. Okay, so when h is there, we're going to put a 4. When m is there, we're going to put a 5. And when n is there, we're going to put a 6. Easy peasy, guys. Okay, so we have h onto m plus n divided by 2. We got this. Okay, h is 4. M is five, we're still adding, that's not gonna change, and N is six, oops, that'll work. And that divides by two isn't gonna go anywhere, okay? All right, so now, first we need to take care of the parentheses because we're using Pandora's, okay? So first we're gonna take care of the parentheses. So we have four, and instead of our parentheses, because I'm going to take care of the parentheses, I'm going to put a time sign. And five plus six is 11, and then divide by two. Okay, not so bad. Okay, so now we're going to do whatever comes first. We took care of our parentheses. We don't have any exponents. We're going to do our multiplication and division, whichever one comes first. Okay, well, that's the multiplication. Well, four times 11 is 44. And our divided by two didn't go anywhere. Okay, didn't disappear. So now 44 divided by two, well, two goes into two twice and two goes into two twice, which means 22. Okay, write down your work. Okay, all right. Thanks for hanging out for 7.6. Come on back for 7.7. .7. See you soon.